So now what we want to do is we want to know how we can analyze this DNA. And the first thing I want you to understand is that to do any of this, this next portion, we're going to need specific enzymes that are called endonucleases. Specifically, they're called restriction endonucleases or restriction enzymes. Let me explain to you how this works. In your DNA, let's say that you have a specific sequence. Okay, that looks like this. Complement strand would look like this. So if in your DNA you have this sequence, and these, this particular enzyme, this restriction endonuclease you choose, picks the sequence, what it's going to do is it's going to bind to the DNA, and it's going to result in the DNA to be cleaved. Okay? So cleavage of the DNA is the end result of the binding of this particular endonuclease. And it only occurs whenever this particular sequence of DNA happens. So CCA, TGG, CCA, TGG. Okay, and the end result of that, you're going to have these overhangs that are known as sticky ends. Okay, in this particular instance, it doesn't always result in this, but this is one of the potential outcomes. So, G, T, A, C, C, and G, and then G, T, A, C, and C, and G. Okay, so anywhere in your DNA sequence where you have this particular sequence of nucleotides, you will get this particular event. Which means, if you were to have a piece of DNA that had one of those sequences right in the middle, or maybe a little off to this side, okay, and then a second piece of DNA that had the sequence right here, I think what you can see is after the cleavage event has occurred, in this particular instance, you're going to have fragments of DNA that look something like this, while in this instance, you're going to have fragments that look like this. Okay, so in both cases, you still get two fragments of DNA, but in this case, you've got longer pieces. In this case, you've got one long piece and one short piece. We can use this to our advantage. So what this means is if a person were to commit a crime and leave a piece of their DNA at the scene of the crime, only that person's DNA would have the exact same restriction sites as the crime scene DNA. So if we had two suspects and we put their DNA in a restriction enzyme reaction, one of the suspects, the guilty one, would get their DNA to be cleaved the exact same way that that of the crime scene. But if this person's DNA was cleaved, their DNA is not going to look anything like that from the crime scene. Okay, so now what I'm going to show you is how we can take these pieces of DNA, these fragments, and put them into a particular solution or substance and then analyze it. So we're going to take these and we're actually going to place them into a substance that is called agarose. And we're going to run what's known as an agarose gel. And it's going to separate these different fragments of DNA based upon their size.